Media Types Overview Ethernet Copper Cabling Two of the earliest standards of Ethernet Copper Cabling were nicknamed ThickNet and ThinNet. They both used coaxial cable, which was expensive and difficult to pull or manage in wiring networks. A more manageable and inexpensive solution was Unshielded Twisted Pair, or UTP. Unshielded Twisted Pair uses twists in the wire pairs to create a cancellation effect which protects against crosstalk and magnetic interference. If the environment experiences a lot of magnetic interference, you can use Shielded Twisted Pair, or STP. STP is more expensive than UTP because it includes foil shielding inside of the cable. An even more protected version of the cable is FTP, or Foil Shielded Twisted Pair. Some of the shielding in these types of cables shield around all four wire pairs or shield around the pairs individually. If the cable needs to be run through a drop ceiling or where there is an HVAC or cold air return, you need to use plenum rated cable, which uses plastics that are non-smoke generating. If you need to run Ethernet cable outside, you can purchase outdoor rated cable, which has a thick plastic outer jacket. Here is a listing of the various types of Ethernet copper cable. You can see the 10 base 5 and 10 base 2 cables, that's the thick net and the thin net, using RG8 and RG58. The 10 means 10 megabit per second, the base means baseband technology, and the number indicates the distance. 5 for 500 meters, 2 for 185 meters, which they used to round essentially to 200 meters. 10 base T was the first unshielded twisted pair version of copper cabling, CAT3 cable. It could be run 100 meters or 300 feet and was rated at 10 megabits per second. Fast Ethernet or 100 base TX used CAT5 cable. An advance over the CAT5 cable was CAT5E, which could be used on gigabit networks. CAT5E has more twists per meter in the cable and better termination. Today, Ethernet networks use CAT6 cable, which has even more twists per meter and better termination at the ends. CAT6A cable is rated for 10 gigabit networks. Here is a picture of UTP and STP cables. Notice the twisted pairs. There's eight wires, four pairs with twists, creating the cancellation effect. You can see the shielding, the outer shielding, around the pairs on the STP cable. Notice the ground wire as well. A straight-through cable has wires that match on either end of the cable. The wires are run to the same pins on either end. Here, the cable is connecting here on the right, and this one's connecting on the left, but it's been flipped upside down. So essentially, pin one here to pin one here, this is a straight through cable. To create a crossover cable traditionally, you would cross pins one and three, and pins two and six. This would give you a fast ethernet crossover cable. Fast ethernet and ethernet only used two of the pairs of wires to do the sending and receiving. Today, gigabit and 10 gigabit cables use all four pairs of wires, so a crossover cable like this is no longer needed. A rollover cable is a special cable invented by Cisco Networks for console connections. Pin one runs to pin eight on the other side, so you can see here pin one on the left, the tab is down, running all the way to the other side to pin eight, the tab is down on the other side. One runs to eight, two to seven, three to six. This is an example of a rollover cable. RJ45 and RJ11 connectors. An RJ45 is for all four pairs. An RJ11 is used on telephone networks and has only two pairs. Coaxial cable terminators. You can see the early types of terminators used in a thin net network. These are uh, T-connectors and terminators.
This is an F-type connector, the type you would see on your cable network if you have cable TV at home. This type of cable connection would plug into your cable modem. There are two main types of Ethernet fiber optic cabling, multi-mode fiber and single-mode fiber. Multi-mode fiber uses an LED light source, and single-mode fiber uses a laser light source. The glass core in a multi-mode fiber is generally thicker than the single-mode fiber, which has a much smaller glass core. Multi-mode fiber is generally less expensive than single-mode fiber. You can see here the standards for fiber optic cabling. Notice a 1000 base ZX single-mode fiber, which can run up to 70 kilometers in distance. A 1000 base SX, this is short wavelength, multi-mode fiber, which can be run 220 to 550 meters. A 1000 base LX, which is long wavelength, multi-mode fiber, which can run 550 meters. Multi-mode fiber cable generally uses an orange color, and single-mode fiber cable oftentimes uses a yellow color. So if you're in a networking closet and you see a yellow cable coming from a switch, chances are it's run single-mode fiber and is probably a 10 gigabit per second connection. If it's an orange cable, it's probably a multi-mode fiber running gigabit speeds. Here's a sectional diagram of a fiber optic cable. You can see the black outer jacket, a strength member, a buffer, and then the silicone coating, the cladding, and the core. The core is the glass or silica that the light runs through. The cladding is also used in measurements of the thickness or diameter of a fiber optic cable. The goal with a fiber optic cable is to keep the light within the cable and not let it escape. Here are the different types of fiber optic connectors. You can see ST, SC, LC, MTRJ, and FC connectors. Oftentimes, these connectors you'll find in pairs since one fiber optic cable is used for sending and another fiber optic cable is used for receiving, they're oftentimes grouped together in pairs. You can see here some examples of fiber optic cable for purchase. Notice the multi-mode fiber optic cable, LC to LC, meaning LC connectors on one end and LC connectors on the other end. You can see the 50125 microns. The 50 identifies the diameter of the core, and the 125 identifies the diameter of the outer cladding. Notice that the multi-mode fiber is 5125, whereas the single-mode LC connectors are 9125 with a much smaller core. Notice that this cable is an LC-SC fiber optic cable, meaning it has LC termination on one end, and on the other end uses SC termination. It's used for single mode fiber optics. This cable has LC on one end here, and ST connectors on the other. And this cable has MTRJ connectors on one end, and SC connectors on the other.